Hello you, welcome to Geekism and welcome back to Distant Kingdoms. This is our part two of our first look at this one. Sorry this one took a little bit of a while to get out. Uh, there's no save feature in the demo currently, so uh, I couldn't pick up where we left off in the last episode. So I've, this is, you want to seen this, I've gone for a bit more of a basic sort of anno setup where we grid everything because I just wanted to get up to... Uh, roughly the same point we were last time, which was hopefully building the tavern and having a look, seeing what um, uh, uh, what sort of the, the role-playing elements of the game are. So, uh, I'm nearly back there. We need eight uh, more people, which in turn is five more houses. Um, but the other thing we've unlocked is a manor well. And I wanted to show you this as well. So, we've got a manor well here that when we click, we can place it down, I hope. Yes. I don't really know. Like, I feel like it needs to be pretty grand area a manor well but nowhere seems to particularly want it to be how about we put it here and then we can put some flowers around it or something i don't know <laughs> we'll see um but otherwise everything's going okay we've got uh yeah 52 people i purposefully not upgrading any houses if you upgrade houses it ends the uh, ends the demo um so we're gonna leave it as is and we've got stone and wood plenty of each to go down there there we go manor wells will pr continue to produce mana as long as they have employees working there and now we can place a totem uh totems okay ah right okay so it's a new resource we've now got six mana and we can place these down um great riches so dedicated to increases taxation well uh sort of a happiness dedicated to increasing happiness hygiene reduces illness oh this is a neat feature um increasing product efficiency uh reduces crime risk oh nice well i think i think uh happiness seems like a good old uh one to start with and if we could put it down like here maybe well i mean that was the other thing i wanted to say oh this one has a ring on it good okay oh well that'll everyone basically everyone in the city is happy now uh one thing i wanted to say is people were pointing out that um i can't the reason i can't build perhaps over here is because it's in like a red zone um i'll tell you now my the color deficiency i have the color blindness i have i cannot see any any at all even the slightest bit of variation between the ground here and the ground there so devs if you're watching you need a colorblind mode this needs to be much stronger of a, of a differentiation between what i imagine is probably red and green but yeah i can't see a single iota of difference between what i can and can't build there so either a colorblind mode that does stuff in grayscale or uh, or you know like a really sharp contrast of color you know like blue and orange or something but uh, yeah i um i struggle with that one okay so we have a po totem there we go uh, so the totem of, oh, he wanted me to build a specific one. Sorry, I'm not listening to the demo. Totem of Foreman and place it near a production building. Yeah, I'm down for that. So up here we have, uh, is there a, so there's a scooch on this as well. We can, all of this can go, but if we put it here, it'll get, I feel like if that's the radius, we can put it here. We could put it, if we could put it there, we would get every single production building we have currently built, uh, buildable. So let's, let's go into this farm um, and delete that there and see if we can place it over here instead. There we go. And now a totem of foreman there. We'll get every production building we have. Why won't it let me build it there? Okay, so I assume I'm still missing something. Totem forum. Oh, we oh we just don't have the mana. We don't have the mana. Right. Okay. Um. So I assume this uses mana. Monthly mana cost is four. And the monthly generation on this is weekly mana is one. Yeah. So okay. All right. So we can't we can't have this here just now. I'm afraid. Uh, you're going to be unhappy, all of you, because the the demo specifically wants me to build a manor of foreman so as soon as that gets up to 15 we can put that down there uh, but yeah otherwise i mean i like the look of this one like i say this is pretty standard kind of anno style resource management uh, gameplay but i think that the, the graphics are beautiful the sort of the fantasy feel is nice i'm big i'm obviously very big on my medieval fantasy i play a lot of dungeons and dragons and stuff like that so you know that's kind of ticking a lot of boxes for me production builders within that times radius will now have increased efficiency there are a number of totems with different beneficial effects selecting now i will 
So this uses weekly, so this is way too much. Like other buildings that increase crescents to maintain, totems cost mana. If you run out of mana, a totem's abilities will start to weaken. Totems have an inherent stability associated with them. The higher it is, the more powerful they are. Inversely, the lower it is, the weaker they are. Uh, you can specify a target stability by clicking on the numbers. Zero stability will do nothing, uh, but it will cost more mana and... Okay. Speaking of which, this number here shows how much mana Totem is currently presumably wants. There, it's all there is to, there, it's all there is to it. Set the target stability. Well, let's set it to 10 then, eh? Unless it, does it take time to go? 4% efficiency. Nice. Okay, well, we'll keep an eye on that. Um, okay, but yes, Tavern is the more important one, really. So, manas and Totems. Yes. Uh, here we go. We need to increase our population to 60 and we need eight. So we need four more houses. That's all. That's all it's asking of us. Is this is this going to always be here, this ring? Because that's a little bit over the top. I think I would probably prefer that to only show... Uh, oh, we don't want to go too far into our berries area there. There we go. Let's, um, let's put two over there. And then... I don't know how far this way we can go. Let's just do two there. There we go. That'll give us the 60 population we need. And hopefully it doesn't affect our marketplace too much. I know bread is a little up and down, but we've got plenty of berries and water in there. Nobody seems to be moaning that we don't have stuff for them. Yeah, they've got everything they need. That's good. I can't imagine these four houses are going to make too much of a change. Uh, but anyway, this is what we want. The tavern. Nice. We can now unlock a uh, tavern. Cool. And then the last one is this citizens. Uh, unlocking citizens, probably, but we're not going to do that because that will end the requirement. Once these requirements have been filled, it will end the demo. So I just want to see if this tavern is a thing. You've, this is truly my important one. So you're ready to go venturing. So we're in Oxford Tradition, build a tavern. Okay. Uh, oh, it's quite a big building, eh? That's uh, well, a good spot for a tavern would be kind of right in the middle of town, but we can't seem to do that. I suppose here... Let's build it there, just one away. Because I did notice in the decorations. Uh, oops. Decorations. We could put down uh, tavern benches. Where are you? Uh, tavern tables, look. Yeah, get some tavern tables out the front here. There we go. Just because, you know, we do that. Each tavern supports one party of adventurers. To create a party, open the world view. Nice. Okay, click on the exploration button. And we can uh, recruit adventurers to form a party. Click on recruit a party to do so. Uh, is that these? Oh, recruit party. There we go. Oh, here we go. Adventurers have traits, levels, and XP. They gain XP as they explore. As they level up, they earn more traits. These traits come in handy when clearing dungeons and defeating creatures out in the wilderness of Eneron. Um, someone's got to buy the mead. Pay, mend the armor, pay for the... Yeah, that's all loss, isn't it? Mindful that adventurers cost crescents up front to hire, and also they have a monthly salary. Okay. Uh, hire four adventurers of your choice, and when you're ready, click return to the map. Okay, so it's it's telling me to hire her. So, sure. Um, so, who, who are you, then? You're a human... Do you have a class? Troll type? You can speak troll. You, a human, you're a scholar. And you're intelligent. So, does that mean you're... Uh, Okay, it doesn't seem that you have a class necessarily. Orcish Heritage, Athletic and Courageous. Well, you sound like a good fit. Darius to Marine there. Let's have a look. Human, Orc, um, Elf and Dwarf. Maybe take one of each, I suppose. Let's have a look. We've only have that one Elf to choose from. What do you do? You have a Kleptomaniac with Sharp Hearing. Your character is impressive. Needs to ability take it they probably shouldn't yeah let's go for you you're going to get some extra money in and a, and a hearty dwarf as well uh we have tinnus or elise elise looks a bit more like a traditional draw uh manner affinity or what do you have tinnus you have barbarian oh there we go there's the actual class um well, let's bring yeah, let's bring Timus in there because it seems to go well with a slightly more sort of cerebral two and more two heavies. Okay, returns to the map. You want to explore new hexes to see all that are nice on. So I feel like I'm gonna do this one because at the moment we're kind of stuck here, right? So I'm gonna click this one. 
Um, an available for building. Okay, watch out. Some hexes may contain creatures or dungeons. Creatures block hexes while dungeons are scary. Residents won't want to go near them and they'll spread negativity to nearby buildings and reduce happiness. Okay, your party clears hexes by navigating event chains. Traits, morale, and XP will increase their chances of victory. Morale uh, will increase uh, as more hexes are cleared. Okay, to send your party, click on the send adventure button uh, and then left click on an adjacent hex. There we go. Uh, exploration takes time as your party faces the challenges they find. You can track your party's progress uh, by looking at the progress bar. Uh, if a hex has no creatures or dungeons, then look at you. The hex will become available once the party has finished their exploration. If the party attempts to take on a creature or dungeon it is unfortunately unsuccessful. Not to worry, they can always return and try again after a cooldown period and their morale and perhaps their pride has recovered. Uh, that's all there is. Close this window anytime to return to your settlement. Okay. I mean, is that the house? The party's encountered a group of imps uh, who have followed them for some time, looking for a way to cause total chaos. They find that way when the party happens on a ruined house and the imps beckon them forward with the evil grin. Should the party follow? Ooh, okay. Ventures begin the encounter. Yes, begin. Okay. Uh, as the party nears the house, they see that it was once a grand place, perhaps the home of one of Inneron's former habitants. The doors and windows on the ground floor are blocked up, however, that meaning the only way is through an upstairs window. So choose an adventure. So I want somebody who's athletic, yeah? Athletic to scale, or an illusionist to dispel the illusion and find a safe way up the window. Oh, do we have an illusionist? I don't think we do, do we? Okay, well, yeah. Darius, you're going in. Well done, they reach the top without incidents and the others are able to follow. Huzzah! Um, so that, that sort of stuff just pops up occasionally, I suppose. Oh, here we go, the house. Once inside the house, the party is stunned to see the appearance of the ruin on the outside was just that, an appearance. Inside the house is a grand, as intact as it would have been years ago. What a strange place. The party is itching, the party, excuse me, is itching to explore. This is awesome, it's like d d in a mini game. Uh, what are you waiting for? Time to explore. Use the courage characters to lead the way. Or, hold up, we should probably check these places and booby trapped. Yes, you know what I'm like. I do. Use a perceptive character. Do we have somebody with perception? Uh, I don't feel like we do. Hmm. I don't think we have anyone who's courageous either. <laughs> Unless you are. Oh, yeah. It's, it's uh, Darius again. We're guns blazing. Party rebels advance through the house and make their way downstairs safely. Huzzah. So, yeah, you want, you need, it looks like you need to try and cover all of those bases and kind of have a few a few that do everything. In the meantime, I'm going to grow some berries. At the bottom of the stairs, the party are greeted by a variety of sounds. Scurrying little hooves can be heard around them, following uh, followed by their evil little chuckle we all know so well. Where are the noises coming from? Sharp earrings, a search for the imps. Hunter to trace them again I, now i really don't think we have either here we don't have either uh your intelligence so it might help but yeah you can hear nothing and as such i have no idea where the troublemaking pets are the bottom of the stairs the party are greeted by a variety of sounds um sharp hearing or hunter i obviously i can't do it Tracks are picked up with relative ease. Oh, okay. Do they have hunter? Lead you to a down a door under the stairs leading down to the basement. Okay. Maybe, maybe they did have hunter trace then. Okay, some berries there. Here we go. The house. Oh my words. Down in the basement, the party's plunged into darkness. Panic I've got dark vision. Uh panic eating shoes. Uh, until some bright spark remembers the torches in their pack. They light on their side once more. They step forward and find the imps before them. The cackle in unison, and one tells them that the door behind them is now sealed forever, unless the party can convince them to open it again. So we can attack them, or we can use a shady character to offer the imps something to let them go. Okay, so yeah, you don't oh you have sharp hearing. So you could hear, okay. So, Shady or Jeweler, I don't think we have either. But you, you could fight. The imps are dealt with quickly and in an efficient manner and the door behind them opens on its own as if by magic. Huzzah, cool. So maybe you don't need that exact one, but there are like ones that, that, that are close. Uh, your ventures have been successful in clearing the encounter. You're now able to build in the hex. Victory is ours, huzzah! Um, which I assume means we can build over here now, but like I say, I color wise, I really struggle to see. But let's have a look. 
it's all valid now up to there so what's this circle then I don't know what that circle is because th that's the that circle is for that totem that circle the middle of it is like here I just don't know what it is but never mind we built the tavern nothing to see here there are no active quests right now I know a mysterious smell um Smell me room, which gets 350 crescents. Yeah, of course we'll pay for that. Extra taxes. Keep it in the treasury. Oh, we found some money. Give it back to the people. We'll take the happiness. We don't need the cash. There we go. Uh, I don't... Is there anything else to... Oh, yeah. So there's this one here. Citizens. Exploration. Five density... Mid-density pleasant houses and a tavern. It gives us firefighters, apothecary, guardhouse, and weaver. Uh, but like I say, I, I'm pretty sure when we... When we actually come to it... Um, it doesn't actually help us. Now, remind me how we do the upgrade. There is a button for it somewhere, I believe. There. Unable to upgrade density. Unable to upgrade density. Oh, we don't have any. We don't have any wood. Yes, we do. It was just because it was poor. I was gonna say we should have wood. Okay, so these ones here. I'm gonna. I'm gonna upgrade the density of these. These are as the five OG ones. No, we don't have any wood. Okay, that's fair enough. We built four. It's fine. That's big houses though, eh? I'd have been one of those. I think I think you have to live with like 30 other people. But still. You would be able to find somewhere quiet to play video games, I feel. Does it actually up the population? Let's have a look. Yes, for you doubles it almost. That's good. Almost doubles it. It does double it. There we go. Thank you for playing. So there you go. Demo's done. <laughs> uh, we hope you enjoyed your first adventure in Inneron. Uh, there's so much more to come, and we hope you'll join us. I did enjoy it. Yes, fun one, this. I, like I say, the actual so city builder's pretty run of the mill, but that adventuring thing is a nice change of pace, and it's always nice to see... Uh, uh, you know, games try something a little bit different. Uh, there you go. A bit of a short one, this one, I think, because um, I just wanted to sort of show you the full range of the demo. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Till the next one, be good.